This part of the presentation will illustrate how Timing Designer has capabilities, especially for building complex diagrams. We'll cover derived clocks, derived signals, and differentially ended signals, which will include state decodes, measure events, guarantees, and SKUs. And lastly, we'll go over complex diagram capabilities in the parameter spreadsheet. Derived clocks are a convenient way to create dependent clocks from a base clock and allows modeling of clock trees, unique clock chips, and other clock generation functions. To create a derived clock, there must be a primary input clock source present in the diagram. But once that's established, select the D-Clock tool to bring up the attribute dialog box and fill out the appropriate fields. As with signals and buses, you can provide comments for descriptive identities of your derived clocks. For a base clock, you can select any established clock waveform in the diagram, including other derived clocks. The divisor field is the main field that controls the derived clock's characteristics and accepts positive integers or real numbers between 0 and 1. There are also provisions for controlling the relative duty cycle, relative position of the first rising edge, as well as rising and falling delay. Derived clocks are considered a passive entity, so by default, any common uncertainty encountered in margin calculations will be removed, but this can be controlled from the attribute dialog box if necessary. For a divide by clock, simply enter a positive integer greater than 1 in the divisor field and select the appropriate base clock. Timing Designer automatically draws a clock out to the end marker. Any decimal value greater than 1 will be rounded down to the nearest integer. Any uncertainties present in the base clock will be propagated forward as would occur for any passive divide by clock element inheriting uncertainties from its input base clock. Multiplier clocks have slightly different characteristics. To create a clock multiplier, enter a real number value between 0 and 1 that represents the reciprocal of the multiply factor. All reciprocal values are rounded down to the nearest integer so that the multiplier remains an integer value. Timing Designer will not propagate input uncertainties of multiplier clocks since they are typically created with a phase lock loop circuit and therefore don't inherit uncertainty characteristics of their base clock. They will have their own uncertainty characteristics dependent upon the phase lock loop device being modeled and are accounted for via the rising and falling delay entry fields. Any complex uncertainties can be easily accommodated using variables in the parameter spreadsheet and then referenced from these delay fields. For non-integer multipliers and divisors, you can create the resulting clock waveform by treating the non-integer as a complex fraction and implementing derived clocks in two stages. One for the numerator, using the input base clock, and then one for the denominator, that uses the numerator clock as its base. Using the techniques just described, you can model most any clock circuit necessary for your timing needs. Timing Designer provides a derived signal feature that allows you to model complex combinatorial or sequential circuit functionality. For instance, if you need to model a circuit that is a logical AND operation of some signals, or if you need to model a large multiplexer or other complex equation, a derived signal offers the simulation characteristics to do it. In this example diagram, we'll implement a bidirectional bus whose direction is controlled by the signal DIR. We have two separate buses representing input data and output data, and using the derived signal with a conditional operator, we can model the bidirectional bus as it would appear at the output ports. To create a derived signal, Select the DSIG tool button to bring up the attribute dialog box and fill in the appropriate fields, including the desired initial state and appearance setting for the various state results. By default, the derived signal attribute dialog box is set for combinatorial mode. Timing Designer supports a single line of either Verilog or VHDL code for describing the derived signal. Using the combinatorial mode, we enter the equation in the input field. Enter any characteristic delays and select OK. Our bidirectional bus will now be displayed showing the propagation of the input bus when the control signal is high and the output bus when the control signal is low. Switching to the sequential mode, we can model most any synchronous circuit characteristic. Selecting sequential in our attribute dialog box will activate the remaining fields in the equations area allowing implementation of a D register. Notice the input field changes to the D field with activation of clock, clock enable, asynchronous reset and set, and output enable fields. The set operation is configurable allowing dual use as an asynchronous load operation as well. For synchronous operation of these fields, use the conditional operator within the D field. 
Timing Designer supports both Verilog and VHDL equations for derived signals. To switch between languages, select Options, Settings, Derive Signals, and choose the desired language. Any established equations will be converted to the currently selected HDL mode to maintain diagram consistency.